Hello students, today we will discuss about the anatomy of mandibular nerve and its branches. Now today we will discuss mainly the branches of the trunk of mandibular nerve and its anterior division. We will have the separate video on the branches of posterior division of mandibular nerve. So what is the mandibular nerve? It is the largest of all the three divisions of trigeminal nerve. So when you will see the trigeminal nerve, trigeminal nerve is a mixed cranial nerve. It is a mixed cranial nerve and the most important concept which you have to understand that there are three branches of trigeminal nerve. Ophthalmic division, you have maxillary division, you have mandibular division and once you are using the word mix that means there are two components, there is a motor component, there is a sensory component. Now in this trigeminal nerve, all the three components are having the sensory component, but the motor component of trigeminal nerve is present only in mandibular nerve. That means the ophthalmic division and maxillary divisions are pure sensory nerves, while the mandibular nerve is a mixed nerve which is a branch of trigeminal nerve. That's why it is always asked in viva that what are the motor component of trigeminal nerve and which division of trigeminal nerve carries the motor component. The answer is mandibular nerve. It is a mixed nerve that I explained to you. It consists of both sensory and motor. It is a nerve of first pharyngeal arch which is the second important concept which you have to understand that whenever we are talking about the pharyngeal arches, it should be very clear in your mind that the first pharyngeal arch, all the muscles which are arising from or developing from first pharyngeal arch, they all supplied by mandibular nerve. They all supplied by mandibular nerve. So whenever you are having any muscle which is receiving nerve supply, from mandibular nerve automatically become derivative of first pharyngeal arch. So it supply all the structures of first pharyngeal arch. So what is the course of mandibular nerve? So mandibular nerve begins in the middle cranial fossa as two roots. So there are two roots of the mandibular nerve. First root is large sensory root and second is smaller motor root. Now here again you have to understand that in the my class of trigeminal ganglia I told you that this trigeminal ganglia is a ganglia which is having concavity posteriorly where you have the main part of the trigeminal nerve which is going towards the brain particularly we are talking about the brain stem. Its anterior convex part is giving the three branches. Now these three branches are ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular and they all three are sensory in nature. But when you are talking about the motor, motor is running here as a separate part. It is running as a separate part and this motor branch later on merge with this mandibular nerve. So that's why you have to understand that there are two roots particularly for the mandibular nerve, not for ophthalmic, not for maxillary. These two roots are, one is known as the sensory root which is actually connected with the trigeminal ganglia and the second root that is the motor root which is a separate nerve inside the cranial cavity. So the large sensory root arises from the lateral convex part of the trigeminal ganglia. It immediately leave the cranial cavity by passing through the foramen oval to the infratemporal fossa. Now in this diagram you can see where is the infratemporal fossa. So this region is actually known as infratemporal fossa. Now in this infratemporal fossa this is your foramen oval. Now the, through this foramen oval, you have the exit of both the roots, not a single trunk. This is the important question which you have to understand that sensory root and motor root, they will exit separately through the foramen oval. 
That means the mixing of the motor sensory fibers to make a single mandibular nerve take place outside the foramen oval. So, what about the small motor root? It arises from the pons, which I just told you as a separate now. It lies deep to the trigeminal ganglia and the sensory root. The motor root also passes through the foramen oval. This is the important thing which you have to understand that both the nerves are coming out from the foramen and they are not merging with each other inside the cranial cavity. The mixing of the fibers or I should say the formation of the mandibular nerve trunk occurs outside the foramen oval. So it joins the sensory root below the foramen oval. So this is the question of your exam that where is the meeting point of motor root and sensory root for mandibular nerve? Answer is in the infratemporal fossa just below the foramen oval. And then you have the main trunk and it is just like the formation of a spinal nerve root. Now if you will see, this is your spinal nerve section. Now when you will see the section of the spinal cord, in this section we all know that there are two roots. This is the dorsal root and this is the ventral root. Now these roots are joining to form a spinal nerve at the intervertebral foramen. So, in the same way, you have the formation here outside this foramen oval. So, this is that's why it is written here. Sometimes you have this question that the formation of mandibular nerve depicts to the formation of spinal nerve. How? Explain. So, you can explain this by these two lines. So, thus the mandibular nerve contains now both the component motor and sensory fiber outside the foramen oval. So, in this diagram, you can see that this is your cranial cavity. Inside this cranial cavity, you can see that this is the trigeminal nerve. This is trigeminal ganglia. Now, from the ganglia, you have the three branch ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular. Now, this mandibular nerve, you can see that it is the thickest nerve and the largest branch of the trigeminal ganglia. In this diagram, if you will see very carefully, then you can appreciate the motor nerve because I told you that motor nerve runs below the trigeminal ganglia. So, where is this motor nerve? Now, this is the motor nerve. You can see that this small portion is of motor nerve. If I will make it clear, then you can appreciate the motor nerve. If we will see from below, if you will see the base of the brain, then you can appreciate here is the motor nerve. So, this is the motor nerve which you can appreciate here that this motor nerve is coming out from the pons and it is lies below the sensory root and below the trigeminal ganglia as a separate nerve. So, you have to understand that motor root is a separate nerve which joins the mandibular nerve below the foramen oval. Now, what is the course of the trunk? So, mandibular nerve trunk is a very short trunk. It is a very short trunk and when you will see that after the short course, it divides into the two division. So, in the mandibular now, you will have the three part trunk which is formed by joining of motor now plus sensory now. Then this trunk will divide into the smaller anterior division and the larger posterior division. So, the posterior division is thicker and larger while the smaller div division is the anterior division. Clear? Now, what are the relations of the trunk? Now, when you will see the relations of the trunk, you will have the four headings. You will see the relation anteriorly, posteriorly, medially and laterally. Now, before that, if you will see this base of the skull, you can locate the foramen oval. So, where is the foramen oval? This is the foramen oval. Now, if you will see the position of the foramen oval, which allow the exit of mandibular now, it lies in the infratemporal fossa. But simultaneously, you are able to see there is a tube. Now, this is your auditory tube. This is your auditory tube, which is the cartilaginous part of the tube. Now, here you have to understand that this tube will give rise to the tensor veli palliate muscle along with the scaphoid fossa of the bone. So, this is the scaphoid fossa. So, this scaphoid fossa, which is present at the root of medial pterygoid plate. This is the medial pterygoid plate. Now, when you will see the medial pterygoid plate, at the root of medial pterygoid plate, you are able to see a depression 
and this depression is known as scaphoid fossa now the my purpose to show this diagram is that when the nerve will come out it lies just lateral to this muscle that means the tensor veli palliative muscle is in medial relation to the nerve so if you see the medial relation you will have the tensor veli palliative muscle now along with that there is a presence of a ganglia which is present here and this ganglia is known as aortic ganglia and this ganglia is a sandwich structure between the mandibular nerve and tensor veli palliative muscle that means you cannot see the aortic ganglia from outer side because ganglia is present on the medial surface of the trunk of mandibular nerve the another important relation is that anteriorly what you are able to appreciate here anteriorly you can see that there is a posterior border of this plate and this plate is known as lateral pterygoid plate so anteriorly you have the posterior border of lateral pterygoid plate now what is posteriorly now behind this foramen oval you have this spinous process of sphenoid bone and on this spine you have the foramen spinosum now through this foramen spinosum you have the entry of a artery which is known as middle meningeal artery that's why the middle meningeal artery is posterior to the nerve trunk of mandibular nerve clear so anterior relation is clear posterior is clear medial is clear now what comes laterally now when you will see the lateral aspect of this foramen now here is the origin of a muscle is known as lateral pterygoid muscle now this lateral pterygoid is going towards the head of mandible and you can realize that this foramen oval is now come on inner side of the lateral pterygoid muscle so lateral pterygoid but obviously become the lateral relation in relation to this foramen and that's why in relation to the mandibular nerve so when you are seeing the relation of the trunk of mandibular nerve it is clear that anteriorly you have the posterior border of the lateral pterygoid plate posteriorly you have the middle meningeal artery which will enter through the foramen spinosum medially you have the tensor veli palliative which is actually arising from the scaphoid fossa and the adjacent part of the cartilaginous part of the auditory tube plus the aortic ganglia and laterally you have the lateral pterygoid muscle more specifically the upper head which you will see in the coming diagram now in this diagram you can appreciate that this is the foramen oval now through the foramen oval the mandibular now will come out and you have the anterior division and the posterior division the posterior division is big and the posterior division is giving the further branches anterior division will give the further branches but the important thing which you have to understand that this is the upper head of your lateral pterygoid this is the lower head or larger lower head of lateral pterygoid and when you will make a muscle here it is something like this the muscle will go like this so this is the upper head basically which is covering the exit of your mandibular nerve rather than the lower head because lower head is here lower head will go like this and this is the upper head which is covering the lateral aspect and that's why you cannot see the exit of mandibular nerve trunk now here if you will see the layer by dissection now here i have drawn this so if you will put this muscle here you will realize now you cannot see because the lower head is here and the upper head is here and upper head is actually responsible to hide the exit of your mandibular now so this is the layer by diagram which we have uh, discussed earlier also so what are the branches of mandibular now now when you will see the branches of mandibular now we divide the branches in the three part from the trunk from the anterior division and from the posterior division so anterior division posterior division and the nerve trunk what are the named branches nervus spinosus and nerve to medial pterygoid these are the two branches from the trunk this nervus spinosus is a sensory branch from the trunk while the nerve to medial pterygoid is a motor branch which supply three muscles it supply three muscles one is the medial pterygoid second is two tensor tensor veli palatini 
एंड टेंसर टिम्पेनाय क्लियर सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट थिंग विच यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट द ब्रांचेस फ्रॉम ट्रंक सप्लाय the sensory part that is the nervous spinosus that enters into the cranial cavity to supply the dura mater of the middle cranial fossa and you have nerve to medial pterygoid which is a motor branch and it total supply the three muscle one is the medial pterygoid tensor villi palatii and tensor tympani we have the branches from the anterior division from the anterior division you have three motor branches and one sensory branch now what are the name of the three motor branches you have now to mass masseter muscle temporalis muscle and lateral pterygoid muscle you have one sensory branch and that is the buccal nerve which supply the mucosa on the inner side of buccinator muscle now you have to understand one thing here that buccinator muscle is a muscle which supplied by the facial nerve but the mucosa on the inner side of the buccinator is supplied by the anterior division branch that is buccal nerve so buccal nerve is a sensory branch while the remaining three are motor so when you will see the muscles of mastication now supply medial pterygoid supplied by the trunk remaining three supplied by the anterior division now we will move to the posterior division in posterior division you have the three branch auricular temporal lingual and inferior alveolar nerve now here again the questions are that auricular temporal nerve is again the sensory branch lingual nerve is again the sensory branch but the inferior alveolar nerve is a mixed branch of posterior division why mixed branch because inferior alveolar nerve will supply the muscles that is known as nerve to mylohyoid that is known as nerve to mylohyoid and this nerve to mylohyoid which is a branch of inferior alveolar nerve will supply the mylohyoid muscle anterior belly of digastric so if you will see so the whole branching pattern of the mandibular now you will realize that there are three parts of the motor component first motor component in now to medial pterygoid through the trunk motor component through these three muscles of the mastication from anterior division and motor component through the inferior alveolar nerve that is now to mylohyoid that supply the suprahyoid muscle that is the mylohyoid and anterior belly of digastric so all these muscles are known as muscles of the first pharyngeal arch because the mandibular now is a nerve of first pharyngeal arch so what are the areas of distribution if you will see the sensory areas of distribution it supplies the dura mater of the middle cranial fossa which i told you with the help of the nervous inter uh, nervous spinosus then it supplies the lower third of the face it is important lower third except the small areas over the angle of mandible which is supplied by the great auricular now if you remember we have discussed it in the class of the parotid gland where you have the fray syndrome then it supply the mucosa of the cheek and gum with the help of the buccal now and it supply the temporo mandibular joint where it carries the proprioception from the joint now what are the muscles supplied by so in nutshell it supply muscles of the mastication mylohyoid anterior belly of digastric tensor villi palatii and tensor tympani through the nerve to medial pterygoid then this is again the important thing that mandibular nerve is for, forming the ascend, uh, ascending and descending limb of mesenteric mastication reflex so both the arm ascending arm and descending arm of mastication reflex is formed by the mandibular nerve in this diagram you can see that this blue color lines are showing the mandibular nerve branches so this is the auricular temporal nerve which is supplying the sensory area this is the inferior alveolar nerve which is supplying the lower teeth and the mental nerve will come out to supply the sensory area of this region this is the buccal nerve and this buccal nerve will go and supply the mucosa and this is the lingual nerve which will go and supply the tongue so these are the branches of posterior division in term of mandibular nerve so on the face when you will see the facial supply i just told you that it supplies the lower part of the face and in this lower part you don't have the nerve supply on this part that is the area over the parotid gland and this area is supplied by great auricular nerve so now this is the another concept which you have to understand that which are the branches of your mandibular nerve carrying the secretomotor fiber now there are 
two major branches which are carrying the secretomotor fibers and these secretomotor fibers are entering into these now not directly from the nuclei. This is the important thing which you have to understand that once you will have any ganglia, any parasympathetic ganglia, you always have the preganglionic pathway. Now preganglionic pathway starts from the nuclei which are present in the brain stem. They will reach and relay into these ganglia. From this ganglia, the second set of the neurons will come out as a postganglionic fiber and they ultimately supply the gland. Now, when you will talk about the mandibular nerve, you have the auriculotemporal nerve which basically is carrying the postganglionic fibers for the parotid gland. In the same way, when you will have the lingual nerve, now lingual nerve is carrying the preganglionic fibers and these fibers will relay into the submandibular ganglia to the submandibular gland and sublingual gland. So you have to remember that auriculotemporal now carries the postganglionic secretomotor fibers for the parotid gland while the lingual now carries preganglionic fibers those are going to relay into the submandibular ganglia. Clear? Then you will have the nervous spinosus. So this is the first branch and this branch is coming from the main trunk. This now is also called as meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve and this now is having a recurrent course. Now why recurrent? Because you have to understand this concept that mandibular nerve itself is coming out from the cranial cavity and it is giving a branch which is going back again inside the cranial cavity. So that's why it is having a recurrent course and it re-enters into the cranial cavity through the foramen spinosum. I am using the word re-enter, the mandibular nerve is not entering but the nervous spinosus is entering and it is having the recurrent course and then you can see it will supply this green color area that is the middle cranial fossa. And because it is passing through the foramen on the spine of sphenoid that is known as foramen spinosum that's why the word comes nervous spinosus then in this diagram you can locate this is the foramen spinosum it is behind the foramen oval so you have to keep this thing in mind in the viva this is the most commonly asked question about the positioning of foramen oval and foramen spinosum now now to medial pterygoid this is the second branch from the trunk and you will see that this branch is very close to aortic ganglia. I just told you in the relation of the trunk, that trunk is a area where you have medially placed tensor veli palliti and laterally you have the lateral head of pterygoid, upper head of lateral pterygoid muscle. Now this trunk is very near to the aortic ganglia. So one of the branch which is going to supply the tensor veli palliti and tensor tympani passes through the aortic ganglia but it is having nothing role, no functional role with the ganglia. It just passes without relay or without, without synapse. What does it mean? That suppose this is the trunk of your mandibular nerve and you have the ganglia here. Now what will happen? Now the anterior division, the, the trunk will give the nerve that is known as nerve to medial pterygoid. Now this nerve to medial pterygoid will go towards the medial pterygoid muscle and one of this branch will pass through the ganglia without relay through and through and then it will supply the tensor tympani and tensor veli palliti. Now this now is doing nothing with the neurons those are present in the ganglia that means it is not synapsing in with any neurons of this aortic ganglia. So this you have to understand and then it supplies the medial pterygoid from its deep surface. So in this diagram of nerve to medial pterygoid here you can appreciate that this is the your this is the foramen and through this foramen through this foramen there is a exit of the uh, mandibular nerve now once this mandibular nerve will come out you have the nerve to medial pterygoid which is going deep to the medial pterygoid muscle so this is the medial pterygoid muscle now in this diagram, where is the nerve to medial pterygoid? Now if you want to see the nerve to medial pterygoid, you have to go deep and this is actually nerve to medial pterygoid. 
and this now to medial pterygoid will disappear on the inner surface of medial pterygoid muscle then you have deep temporal muscle deep temporal muscles are the branch of the anterior division and they are generally two in number anterior and posterior and these temporal nerves will go along the upper border of the lateral pterygoid ascend into the temporal fossa and they will supply the temporalis from the deep surface so here you can see that this is the cut part of the temporalis and you can see the nerves are passing on the deeper surface and they will supply this temporalis muscle from the deeper aspect then you will have the mesetric nerve now there are two three question from this nerve the first question is that when you will have the mesetric nerve the nerve is passing above the upper head of the lateral pterygoid and proceed laterally then it emerges through the mandibular notch and it supply again the masseter from the deep surface and it gives a articular branch to the temporomandibular joint so the question is what is this is known as now this portion of the mandible is known as mesetric notch now what are the structures passes through this mesetric notch here you can see this is the nerve and this nerve is entering into the masseter muscle and this nerve is known as mesetric nerve apart from that you can also appreciate that this is the upper border of your lateral pterygoid muscle and you can see that this nerve is emerging out through the upper border of this lateral pterygoid muscle upper head clear so these are the two three important questions sometimes you have this exam based image based question in the exam where you have this labeling identify the nerve so you can identify this nerve by the two clues first clue is that the nerve is exiting along the upper border of the lateral pterygoid second thing is it is passing through this mesetric notch then nerve to lateral pterygoid now when you will see the nerve to lateral pterygoid this these are the two head which you which you have one is the larger lower head and this is the smaller upper head so this nerve to lateral pterygoid sometimes having a two part one for each head it runs with the buccal nerve and it enters the deep surface of both the head and it supply the nerve from deeper side so here you can see that this is the buccal nerve now this is basically the buccal nerve and this buccal nerve is a last or the you can say the fourth or the longest branch of the anterior division now the nerve to lateral pterygoid is running with this buccal nerve and then it is supplying to the your both heads from its deep side clear then you will have the buccal nerve buccal nerve is the last or the fourth branch of your anterior division and as i already told you that buccal nerve is the only sensory branch from the anterior division remaining three branches are motor and they will supply the muscles of mastication the buccal nerve contains all the fibers of common sensation in the anterior division of mandibular nerve it emerges between the two heads of lateral pterygoid it emerges between the two heads of lateral pterygoid it is again a image based question which you can appreciate here that this is the buccal nerve and if you will see the course of the buccal nerve it is having the upper head this is the lower head and both the head are joining together and once you will join both the head then you will see realize that the buccal nerve is coming out through the gap between the upper and lower head of lateral pterygoid so it is very commonly asked question in exam that name the nerve exit through the space between the upper and lower head of lateral pterygoid answer is buccal nerve so buccal nerve comes out from this gap and then it passes downward on the lower head so here you can see that the nerve will first exit between this gap and after exiting it is running on the external surface of lower larger lateral pterygoid muscle and it then courses downward forward and it will reach on the buccinator so this is the buccinator muscle so it comes on the buccinator now ultimately it pierces the buccinator it pierces the buccinator it will give the proprioceptive fibers to the muscle and once it will pierce the buccinator it become deep to supply the mucosa of oral cavity it will supply mucosa of oral cavity so you have to understand 
that what is the course of buccal nerve? That buccal nerve exit between the gap of the two heads of lateral pterygoid, then it runs on the outer surface of the lower larger head, then it pierces the vaccinator and then it pierces the, it enters into the mucosa which is just inside the vaccinator. So, it supply the mucosa of the cheek and the gum of the lower jaw opposite the lower molars and second premolar up to the mental foramen. Now you have to understand that when you are talking about the complete supply of oral cavity, you have to understand this part that our lingual nerve, is, sorry, our buccal nerve, which is a branch of the anterior division, is supplying this area which is near to the lower part of the molar, not the upper. It is supplying the mucosa around or in the relation of the lower jaw not in relation to the upper jaw. Second and important thing is that much of the mucous membrane of the inside of the cheek and lip is supplied by the buccal branch of the mandibular nerve with contribution of the mental branch of the inferior alveolar nerve with contribution of infraorbital branch of maxillary nerve. That means if I will talk about the complete mucosal supply, if I am talking about the complete mucosal sensory supply then the three nerves will come buccal branch of the mandibular which we are talking here then you will have the mental branch which will come in this part and infraorbital which will come into the upper part of oral cavity then what is the referred pain of cancer tongue so these are the two very important applied aspect you have the question that if a patient of the carcinoma of the tongue, why he is having the refer referred pain into the ear or other part. So, you have to first understand the question that what can be the side of the referred pain. So, what are the sides of the referred pain? The side of referred pain can be the ear, it can be the TM joint or it can be the temporal fossa or lower teeth. Now, why? The answer is, it is the referred pain and the important Thing is that pain is frequently referred from one branch of the mandibular nerve to the area of other branch. Clear? So the carcinoma commonly involve anterior two-third of the tongue and we know that the sensory supply of anterior two-third of tongue is carried by the lingual nerve which is a branch of mandibular nerve and the other branches of mandibular nerve are sensory to the ear, sensory to the TM joint, temporal fossa and inferior alveolar nerve is sensory to the lower teeth. That's why the pain on the anterior two-third of tongue refer to these areas. So, thus if the sensation carried from the anterior two-third of the tongue by lingual nerve are referred to the area or supplied by auriculotemporal nerve and patient will have the pain in the ear, TM joint and temporal fossa. On the other hand, if the pain from the lingual nerve is referred to the inferior alveolar, then person will have pain into the lower teeth. Clear? So, the question is asking about that why the cancer of anterior to that of tongue may refer to the ear, lower teeth, temporal fossa. So, so you should have the name of nerves which are supplying ear and TM, fossa, TM joint and fossa is supplied by the branches of auriculotemporal nerve while lower teeth is supplied by the branches of inferior alveolar nerve. The last point of this class is why the referred pain is there in case of the tooth. Now when you have the pain, it is the pain frequently referred from one branch of mandibular nerve to the another, the reason is the same and similarly the pain from the teeth may refer to the ear and temporal reason again because the sensations from the lower teeth are carried by inferior alveolar nerve while the ear is supplied by the branches of auriculotemporal nerve which is again a branch of mandibular nerve. So, at the end of this session, now we are able to understand why the mandibular nerve is considered as a mixed cranial, cranial nerve branch. Second, what are the motor components of the mandibular nerve and what are the different branches from different divisions of mandibular nerve. In the coming class, we have a separate uh, video on the branches of sec, uh, posterior division of mandibular nerve. So, this is all for today's. Thank you.